In this video, we'll look at how to find a rate of change using a graph. So in this problem, we're told that the total monthly cost to attend a fitness club is made up of a fixed fee and a cost per visit. The graph on the right shows the relationship between the total monthly cost, which we're calling C, and the number of visits, which we're calling N. And we are asked to determine the cost per visit. All right, so let's get going here. To find the cost per visit, we'll use two points on the graph and we'll look at how the cost changes from one point to the next. So usually we try to find points that we can read easily. And lucky for us, if we look right at the beginning of the graph here, we have a nice point that falls right on the grid line, right there at 20. So we'll make that one of our points. And as we move up the graph, let's look for another point on this line that's right on a grid line. Ah, there's one there, right where the grid lines cross. So we'll use that. Now you could use any two points on this line, it doesn't matter, but we'll go with these ones for now. So to find out the cost per visit, what we need to investigate is how the cost changes from our first point to our second point, and how many visits that corresponds to. We do this by seeing how much we move over and up from one point to the next, from the first point to the second. You could also go up and then over, it makes no difference. So let's first of all figure out how much we went up. That is, let's figure out how long this line is, if you will. Well, if we look at the vertical axis, that's the cost axis, we can figure out how much we went up here. Now notice that they've labeled 10 every two squares, every two ticks is 10, which means that every square here must be five, it's just half of 10. And if it helps, feel free to go ahead and label some extra numbers on the axis. So we notice that moving up the vertical axis, each square is another five. So let's go back to our line here. How many squares do we have? One, two, three, four squares. And each square is five. So let's count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20. We went up 20. There's other ways you could get this number two. For example, you could say this point right here is 40 high and this one was 20 high. So the difference between those is 20. That works fine too to get this 20. It's up to you. Now let's take a look at how much we went over here. To do that, we'll use the horizontal axis, which is our number of visits. And we are going up by two, but that's every other square. So every other tick is two. So again, let's go ahead and label some of the other ticks that aren't labeled with numbers yet. Um, each one would be one. Okay, so half of two is one, so we're going up by ones on that axis. Now we go up to our line up here, and how many squares do we have? One, two, three, four, five squares. And according to our axis here, each square is one, which means that this must be five long. And there it is. Okay, so what do we have? Well, we have a 20 and a five, which means that over the course of five visits, the cost went up by $20. Let's write that down. Over five visits, the cost changes by $20. Well, what we need to figure out is how much the cost changes per visit, that is for one visit. So we know it's $20 for five visits. So let's take that $20 and split it up by five visits. In other words, do 20 divided by five, and that will give us four. So each visit costs $4. And lucky for us, if we look at our choices in the multiple choice, we do have a four. So that is the correct answer. But before we wrap things up here, let's just talk about a couple other things. Sometimes a student will ask why they can't do this. If we look up here, this is a, a nice point that falls on the grid line crossings. It corresponds to a cost of $100 and 20 visits. So sometimes people will ask, well, why can't we just do 100 divided by 20, giving us $5 per visit? Unfortunately, we can't do that because over the course of these 20 visits, the cost did not increase by $100. And the reason for that is because the cost did not start at zero. It actually started at 20, which means over the course of 20 visits, the cost only went up by 80. All right, so we can't do that there, unfortunately. It won't work just using a single point. Now, if the graph did start at zero, in other words, if it was a direct variation, we could do that. 
Do watch out though. Five is an option in our multiple choice. It's there to throw you off. I believe that's how they got this six dollars here as well. I think if we choose the point right here, corresponds to $60 and uh, 10 visits. If you do 60 divided by 10, you'll get six, but that's also incorrect. Moving on, um, sometimes we refer to these problems as slope problems, and the words that we use when we're talking about slope are rise and run, so you can do that. In this case, the 20 would be our rise and the five would be our run. And to calculate the slope, we do rise divided by run, rise over run is 20 over five in this case, and we get four. And that's the same as what we calculated over here with $4 per visit. And finally, one last point. I chose these two points here to find our rate, but you could use any two points on the graph as long as you can read the numbers easily for those points. So for example, you could have chosen these points here. Uh, it doesn't matter, you'll get the same result. You can choose points that are further apart as well. You'll still get the same result. Uh, because the rate is constant. So any two points that you can easily read the values for will work fine.